Hello and welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. This is my place to talk about all things crochet and knitting and yarny and crafty and all of that lovely stuff. And this is my January wrap up of all the things that I've been progressing or finishing in the month of January. So happy February. It's the beginning of February. We're well and truly into 2024. It's been January I really enjoy. It's been, it's usually a really chilled out month. I should probably introduce myself actually, shouldn't I? Before we go into that. I've just realised I haven't said who I am, where I am or where you can find me. So my name is Ali and I live in the very southeast of England in the county of Kent with my husband who's currently in the room above me working and my two daughters. My oldest who is nearly 18 is at uh, college today and my youngest who is 13 is at school. It's Tuesday when I'm filming this and if you've been here in the last few months you will know that at the same time I'm also keeping an eye on what's going on over the road with the house opposite who uh, it's been bought recently for the first time in 50 years and the young couple are doing it up um, and a van has just pulled up outside so uh, probably expect some interruptions to let you know what's happening oh and they've had their baby by the way but we haven't seen them to speak to them so I don't know if it's a girl or a boy but that's all aside you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram at Starry Eyes Alley I also have another Instagram where I share my walking adventures and other adventures outdoorsy things and nature um, and that is Alison Wonders Land if you're interested in that and I have another channel as well just in all the places uh, as this little wonderful life where I make daily life vlogs ordinary life stuff talk about books talk about the things I'm up to organizing that kind of thing and they're all linked underneath so yeah as I was saying we're well and truly into 2024 now it's February and last month January I did get um, how many things did I get finished as of this morning I've got three finished objects to share with you which I'm quite surprised about because it's been not as chilled out a month as it normally would be because we unexpectedly we didn't factor in the fact that our eldest daughter will be going to university later this year so she has to apply for university but because she's studying acting um, as well as applying and getting offers she also has to audition so we have ended up driving all over the country <laughs> Uh, well all over a lot of England uh, to take her to auditions at universities and we've still got two more to go I will be taking her next week uh, on a whistle stop tour of Bath and Bristol so that'd be nice I'm hoping to see some friends along the way uh, but it did mean that January wasn't the sort of chilled out loads of making time month that I envisaged but I have got some things to share with you so shall we get started straight away with some finished objects? I think it's going to be quite a chilled podcast this because all the fun of this, well, all the fun and sort of admin of the Strictly Sock Along is now behind us. Although I'm still waiting to hear from some winners. So if you joined in with the Strictly Sock Along, either by using the hashtag on Instagram or posting in either of the Ravelry threads, make sure you go and watch my last full length podcast episode 108 which was my December wrap up because you could have won a prize and not know. And if they don't get in touch, I'll draw more winners probably next time. I shall make a note to myself to do that. So my first finished object are my cotton and bamboo socks. And I've got all the details written down in my notebooks. So I decided this year to start a little uh, proper little journal of what I'm making. So I normally have a little notebook on the go just for making little notes to myself and keeping track of count, row counts and so on. But I wanted a proper little notebook where I was going to write each project and the yarn, the pattern and any other details. So this is a gorgeous uh, lobster notebook. I've also stuck some lovely little toadstool stickers in and I've stuck in the back here the it came with a little uh, thing about it. It's made from Lokta plant, eco-friendly, tree-free, handmade, ancient craft, promotes fair trade and women cooperative, handcrafted in Nepal. I'm not actually sure the name of the brand, there's nothing on it, but yeah, it's made with Lokta plant, 
you want to pause that and zoom in and have a little look. I've also put another little sticker here <laughs> just to decorate it. So I've got all of my project notes in here. It's not nothing that's going to be um, aesthetic or anything like that. I'm literally just keeping notes. So I've got my Advent uh, Granny Wrap Triangle, which is uh, the first thing I finished. I actually finished it, I think, between Christmas and New Year. When did I finish it? Did I write it down? 4th of January. I wrote it down. You see, I can now keep track. 4th of January 2024. I finished this. This was with my Advent from Home Spun House. I'll put a little picture up of me holding it up so you can see it in its full glory. I think this is my favourite pattern of all time. I've already got a third and a fourth one in my mind, which I'll probably talk about later. So my cotton and bamboo socks. Uh, I knit on 2.25 millimetre smart sticks by Knit Pro. It's just vanilla socks and the yarn is King, Pl King Cole Summer 4 Ply, which is 55% bamboo. 37% cotton and 8% PBD. And I bought this during a work trip to Manchester. Now I was a little bit worried about how the uh, cotton and bamboo yarn would behave. So I actually cast on 60 stitches, whereas I usually knit my socks 56 stitches. And didn't they come out well? They're not identical. They're sisters, but not twins. I just started them wherever I was in the ball. I've done them quite short in the leg because that's how I like to wear my socks. I did a garter, um, a garter edge heel, which I found that I really liked. I had to redo it a couple of times, like I mentioned last time, but I finally sort of, I think, got the gist. It's not the picking, so I mentioned this last time, and I had a lot of help, helpful advice about twisting the stitches, which I do do. It's not so much about twisting the stitches to get it neat when I pick it up for the, uh, pick up the gusset stitches down the side of the heel flap. It's where to pick those stitches up, which part of that side stitch to go into to, to pick up the stitches, if that makes sense. So I've been working on that a little bit and yeah, I do think I'm very much liking the garter edge heel. I hope that made sense. These are so soft. Oh, the posty now. He dropped something in my letterbox. I didn't hear him. Uh, these are so soft. And I'm so happy with them. I love the colours and how that's worked around the heel. I didn't plan anything. I just went with it and I just love them. And they're so soft and they fit really well. I haven't worn them out yet. That's going to happen this week to give them a bit of a test. Uh, and I'm really happy with the fit. And now that I know how it behaves, I was quite happy to start another pair on 56 stitches, which is my normal count because this pair used... I can tell you because I wrote it down in my notebook 44 grams in total um, so 22 grams each for the socks which means I've got over 50 grams left so which is plenty to knit another pair which is what I'm doing so technically I should probably tell you about that in works in progress but I'm going to show, show it to you now I just straight away started another one and these are even shorter so again, I'm knitting these on Smart Six, which are the ones with the little measurements on. They're like, they've got little inch measurements along them. They're nice. They've got a kind of nice coating to them, which works quite well with this yarn, which is quite slippery. So the first sock of my new pair, I've done exactly the same. I just started where I was. I did about 12 rounds of one by one twisted rib. Vanilla sock, I only did, well, I can tell you exactly, uh, la, 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 la. I did 14 rounds of knit, uh, knit one pearl one twisted rib, I did 8 rounds for the leg, and then again I'm doing a garter edge slip stitch heel, and then on this one I'm almost at the point of doing the toe, and then I've started the next one, I've done the rib, and I'm just about to, well I'm into the leg already, so I'm, I'm trundling along really well with these. And I've got plenty of yarn left to finish them. So I'm not at all worried about running out of yarn. And I'm even going to have a bit less. I'm going to have two full pairs of socks out of that King Cole ball of yarn. And a little bit left over, which I'll probably put in my ugly blanket, which I haven't worked on in a while. But it's basically a giant granny square, which I just add any and all yarn to. I've got a couple on the go. I've got 
a dark four ply one, a light four ply one, and then uh, anything goes, anything, any weight above a four ply one. So maybe I'll have to do a little update on those. Uh, so yeah, I'll have yarn left over for that, which is amazing. So I think the yarn cost me oh, something silly, like four, four pounds, four or five pounds. So what a lot to get out of one very affordable skein of yarn uh, that's really soft. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it wears. Do I have anything else I wish to say about that? My next FO is also a frogging thing. So last time I spoke about uh, the, I'm gonna stop like feeling smug about having my notebook and all of the details to hand. It won't last. I'll, I'll start forgetting to put things in the notebook and then I'll be back to just not being able to remember, remember anything and having to get my phone and Google stuff, but we'll enjoy it whilst it lasts. So I was making the Easy and Fast Chunky Sweater. It's a free pattern on YouTube by the brilliant AC Crochets really enjoying it. I was using uh, the JC Brett, hang on a minute, I've got to show you the label for this, where is it? I had it. Oh, it's fallen down. Oh. The JC Brett, now I referred to this as Flutterby Chunky and I had quite a few comments saying, I think you mean Flutterby, like butterfly. And it probably is Flutterby. But I think Flutterbee is a much more fun word. <laughs> so I'm sticking with it. It's Flutterbee Chunky. That's how I'm going to pronounce it, even though it's wrong. Which looks like this. It's like a chenille yarn and it's chunky and so, so, so soft and lovely. So I was holding this alongside two strands. No. Yeah, two strands of cotton DK to make a jumper. And I made the two panels uh, for the jumper and I sewed them together and I put it on and I thought yeah this isn't what I want it felt like wearing a piece of upholstery it was just too stiff it's just not drapey enough for a garment so I was like oh I'm not going to keep going with it it'd been really simple makes I it felt nothing bad about going back but I thought well I've got these two panels and I've enjoyed making them and I like the way they look so I transformed it it's no longer a jumper and instead, it is now a cushion. So if, you would have seen this if you uh, watched my, I've started doing some little week long making vlogs, like what I can get made during the week. Just a daily life and squeezing my making in. So this showed up on the last one of those vlogs. And uh, thank you so much for your love on those, by the way. I really enjoy making those. So I'm really pleased that you enjoy watching them. So I'll definitely continue with that through the year. Um, I enjoy making them because it kind of motivates me to focus on how I want to fit my making into the week when I'm filming and I find it really interesting to do and uh, yeah it just gives me gives me that focus I really enjoy it anyway so this is what was going to be the jumper is now a cushion and I had a cushion pad already so I just ripped back until it was about the right size and kept ripping back a bit until I knew it would fit exactly. And then I sewed it on to the cushion. So there's no opening or anything like that. It's just completely sewn in. But what I have done is where I, I did it so that I, I sewed along here and I sewed along here. And in the middle, I've tied a bow and just tucked it inside. And then I've sew, sewed a little button here so I know that underneath this button is my bow and if I ever need to take it off to wash it I can just dig out the bow, unravel that, tie it up and pop it in the machine, give it a wash and then tie it up again. So the moment Phoebe saw this she was like, oh where's that going? And I said well I've just made it, I don't know, you probably stick it on the bed or something and she immediately kidnapped it, it goes really well with her room decor and it's now hers and lives on her bed. I striped it so I was holding the, the flutterby or flutterby chunky all the way through and a purple or sort of lilac cotton and then every two rows I swapped between the brown and the blue to make a kind of stripy mould effect and I'm really pleased with that and so is Phoebe. 
So that's what happened to the jumper. And also because of that, I've got another finished object because I had quite a bit of, where I'd frogged back, I had quite a bit of yarn left that was still kind of all together. And if you've ever held several strands of yarn together to make something, you'll know that when it comes to unraveling it and getting it back into its separate balls, oh my goodness, that is a pain. So I thought, well, what could I make with it so that I don't have to do that? I could just make something instead. Now, one of my favourite knitting and crochet podcasters is Rel at the Dabbling Hook. And she quite often will take every last scrap of yarn from something and turn it into a creature. So I channeled Rel. And I used one of Rel's patterns as well. And I made an octo. <laughs> it's not quite finished. I finished this literally before I started filming. So although he's got eyes, he or she has got eyes, I haven't done any facial expressions or anything. So she's definitely going to have some eyelashes. Rel often will do like a little flower decoration or something. Sometimes they have a little smile. I'll, tr I'll try and put a couple of pictures up to demonstrate the different ways that she makes her octos. But she quite often will make, if she's got just a little bit of yarn left, she'll make an octo. Uh, she's got a couple of versions of this pattern. So she's got the original one. And the original one now has an updated bit that makes the tentacles even fuller. That's what I've done uh, now. Uh, and then she's got another one which has got a taller elongated head, which I've also made and I really like. But there's something about this bubbly boobly one that I really love. And I've also stolen Rail's technique of when you stuff it using the uh, a piece of a stocking or tight. So cut the cut the foot off and use that to stuff. So it stops the stuffing coming through. It also gives it a really nice non smooth and non lumpy feel and it also means if, if you're stuffing as you go you can then kind of push the tights over the stuffing whilst it's getting narrower and narrower and narrower and that removes that stage of amigurumi where you can sometimes get the stuffing caught in your hook or i do anyway so yeah so this is my very cute very soft little octo made with leftover yarn from my frogged project uh, but he's yet to be given his personality and facial features but honestly just love him Phoebe's not seen him yet because he wasn't even made this morning uh, when she left so I think I might put, a, put him in the window so when she comes home or I might just put, a, put him in the hallway so as soon as she comes in he's there to greet her oh, I just love it so we pop him there so he can be our little Pod, pod companion for the rest of it. Okay, where are we? So those are my finished objects. Uh, yeah, so in terms of progress on works in progress, I've probably made the most progress on my advent uh, wrap with my Green Lumpkin Yarns advent. So I am making the can never remember what this is called the mini stripes wrap yeah mini stripes wrap it's by Dana Ray makes although that could be Dana Ray makes I had a couple of comments about that as well <laughs> I'm not doing very well my pronunciation of things <laughs> Dana or Dana I should probably ask her uh, but you know who I mean and I was at, I actually was nominated to receive a free pattern from her which was just amazing and I chose this because I knew it'd be perfect for an advent project and I'm loving it. It's really different from anything else I've made during advent before so it's taken me a little bit longer and I had to work out my colour placement. I'm using a three millimetre hook for this and I've got 24 20 gram minis in full ply or fingering weight. You start off with a foundation chain or uh, I, did, I actually did foundation half double crochets of 350, which was no joke to start with, trust me. And then you follow a seven row repeat, no, a six row repeat um, until it's quite enough. She does give you guidance on how many to do, but I'm gonna do it until I'm happy with the width. But also the other factor I had to take in was that I've got 24 colors and I want to use them all. So what I'm doing is I've started with the, this purple edge. I'm doing two rows of each color. 
So at the moment, I've just finished day six, which is this light blue. So we've got day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. And because of my notebook, I can tell you that day one is La Bafona, Italy. Day two is milk and cookies for America. Day three is Christmas cactus for southeastern Brazil. Day four is parole from the Philippines. Day five is Lebkuchen from Germany. And number six is Worldwide, which is White Christmas, because the theme of the advent was Christmas around the world. So it's two of everything. And then when I get to day 24, if I don't feel it's wide enough, I will start again. Either I will start again from the purple, or I will do another two rows of the colour for 24 and then work backwards. But I won't know until I've completed the first 24 colours. And if this is making you feel a bit uh, uncomfortable seeing all these ends, do not fear. The ends are not woven in. They will be turned into fringing. And she actually gives three different options for fringing. Um, so that will happen at the end. I'm pretty sure that occasionally I am miscounting or missing out stitches and not quite getting the right stitch count, but I don't think it's noticeable. It looks quite straight at the end and it's gonna have the fringing as well. So I'm just keeping going. I don't really want to count 350 to check I'm on track. <laughs> I'm being very lazy. Uh, so yeah, that's my green lumpkin advent using the mini stripes wrap pattern by Dana Ray makes and I'm loving it the only thing is you have to really know that you're going to sit down to do a row it's all worked you, you you finish one row you cut it you go back to the beginning so you're always working on the right side so I like to if I'm sitting down to work on it I want to know that I've got the time to finish one row and it takes a little time because it's 350 stitches long. I've also been, I did a little bit of work on my drippity drop socks, not very much. So before Christmas, actually way back in sort of September time, I cast on loads of my Strictly yarns uh, to, so that I had them all on the go. And I'm really glad that I did that because I've got a few finished socks out of it, but I, uh, I haven't made much progress on some of them. So one of them is a drippity drop socks and I'm doing these one at a time. I normally knit my socks concurrently, but I just balled up the yarn into one big cake and didn't do it into two. So I'm just gonna do one and then do the other. So the yarn is Ballroom Bliss. And it is the official, one of the official colorways for the Strictly Sock Along 2023 by Green Lampkin Yarn. And I have turned the heel and I am in to the gusset decreases, which is good progress. I love the drippity drop socks pattern. It's a pattern by Kay James. Sorry for talking with my mouth full. I'm in a tanglement. Eee. Hold it like that to show you the texture. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, I just love it. It's fun to do. It creates a nice suckiness and yeah, it really complements hand dyed yarn as well. I love it. Oh, I just love those colours. It's so lovely. So yeah, I'm on the gusset decreases for that. And for this I'm using Knit Pro Cubics, which I love. These are a recent discovery for me and I absolutely love them. So I think these, after I finish my second pair of the cotton bamboo socks, these are the socks that will have my focus. But I haven't made a huge amount of progress on them, but I have made some in January. By the way, I should have said what I was wearing, shouldn't I? This is the As If Tea by Shay Johnson of Knit and Crochet. I made this quite a long time ago now. Uh, yeah, so I'll put, I think I've got a Ravelry project page for it, uh, which I can link underneath, which will have all the yarns. From memory, I think the, the mohair here, or whatever the fibre content of this was, I can't remember, is bunchy yarns. 
I'll link it underneath because I can't remember. But the the pattern, the as if tea, was a lot of fun to make. It was really quick. The body I, I think was in worsted weight, and you do like the intarsia. Is that what that's called? It's not colour work. It's where so I had one ball for this um, side, one ball for this side, and then a, a ball to work across. So I had a few balls on the go for until I reached the top here. The top here is completely the mohair and then you've got the contrast here and here. Oh, it's so fun to make. And I love wearing it as well. I really want to make another one in another colour. I just love this colour so much. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll link that underneath. I'll make sure to try and link everything I talk about underneath. And there's also, I should have said this at the beginning, there's chapters as well, if you want to skip about. Uh, what else have I been working on? Oh, I've got a whip incoming. I want to show you some yarn. I want to flash you some yarn. <laughs> look, look at the progress I've made on this work in progress. Look at that. It's the world's smallest work in progress. <laughs> it matches my hook. So this is the yarn that I bought from Emma at Eldenwood Craft. It's called Early Snow. She's just started dyeing it on. If you can believe that, looking at this, look at those colours. <gasps> when I, I mean, I loved it in the scheme, but when I, or skein, it's another thing as well that I get comments about. I like saying skein. The word skein makes me feel a bit twitchy. Um, it just seems to me that it should be skein, but most people do say skein. So I liked it in the skein skein, uh, but look at it in the cake. Oh my goodness me. It's just gorgeous. It looks like it's glowing. And I'm going to make a project with this, which as you can see I've started, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to find out next time because I want it to be a surprise for Emma. And just in case she's watching, I don't want her to know what it is yet. I want her to see it once it's finished. I don't mean I'm making it for Emma. Sorry, Emma. <laughs> I'm a very selfish maker. This is for me. Uh, but it's one of my very favourite things that I wear all the time. And I thought it would work really well with this yarn. And so far it looks like it's going to. So here's the ball. Oh no, that's not the ball band. What have I done with the ball band? I had it. Oh, here it is. That's her ball band. Isn't that pretty? Yes, yeah, so that's my incoming whip. Uh, and yes, I've put quite a bit. Oh, did you hear my elbow click then? Ooh, I don't normally click. Phoebe, my youngest daughter, is really clicky. Like she can, she can, she'll, she'll do this and her back goes click, 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 click. And she'll do this with her neck and it goes tong, tong, tong. It's just, ooh, my body doesn't do that, but hers does. That was an aside. I've made quite a bit of progress on my blanket for Lilia. So this is the Sun Gold Blanket by Lucy at Attic24. Uh, it's her brand new pattern. It came out at the beginning of the year. And the colours are all the colours that have been chosen by my daughter Lilia. She wanted a really earthy autumnal uh, palette of colours for this blanket and the idea is I'm going to make this for her to take away to university. It's all Starcraft Special DK because it's going to be super workhorsey, super hard wearing, really easy to uh, wash and look after and she's going to be a student. And she's going to have other things to think about than hand washing, hand dyed yarn. So she chose the colours. I've got five colours in total and I'm trying to mix them so that I'm not just doing them in order. I'm not sure how well that's working so far. I've got another couple of repeats of what I've got in mind to do. But I'm liking how the colours are sitting at the moment. What do you think? I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. So just in case you are interested, I'm going to have to look. I thought I could remember. So this is a free pattern, by the way, by Lucy. And it does, as usual with her um, patterns, it's all full of pictures, brilliant for beginners, really lovely and 
uh, intuitive to work on. You pick the pattern up like really easily and you can just keep going. So we have got, the colours are, this dark brown is walnut, the purpley one is grape, the orange one is uh, copper, the green is khaki, and that uh, lighter brown, that orangey brown, is gingerbread. And those are the colours that I'm using from Starcraft. I'm really, really pleased with this. And I'm also, this is gonna actually bring me along to the next thing I want to talk about, which is the cozy winter blanket along, which I'm running uh, until the end of February with my friend Cherie at the Ollie and Bella podcast. Uh, and we're running, so it started at the beginning of the year. It's the most relaxed make along in the history of relaxed make alongs. It's really chilled. There's one Ravelry group that Cherie's got going in her Ravelry group, there's a hashtag and you can start as long as you aren't already 50% through your project. You don't have to finish and we'll draw a couple of winners at the end. And it's just a nice cozy along for the winter months. Or if you're on, in the Southern Hemisphere for the summer months when you can dream about being cozy in the winter months. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I'm really pleased with how this is coming along and this is my entry, if you like, into that make along. But I've also started another blanket because I'll, I'll put all the details underneath in the description box about the cosy winter blanket um, along as well. So you know how to join in if you want to, because it's running until the 29th of February. So by the time you see this, there's still going to be a couple of weeks left of that. And like I say, you don't have to finish. Uh, OK, so I've started another blanket. And... <laughs> When I say started, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> it's another tiny work in progress. Uh, I've started another blanket. I am making the Weekender Blanket by Sandra Paul, the lovely Sandra of Cherry Heart. And the Weekender Blanket is a join as you go hexy blanket basically with a, with a lovely border and there's a couple of options for how to finish it off at the bottom with a uneven edge or you can even it out it's really really lovely i'll put a little picture up um, of what it looks like and i am going to be making this throughout the year with my minis from the green lampkin yarn blanket club i don't know if you can hear that funny noise but the, it is so windy outside and the wind is whistling down the chimney but there's also bits of cardboard flying about from the skip opposite and I can hear bins falling down in the distance it's been so windy we've already had to put up four new fence panels I could do without having to put up any more okay so what I've done here is I've written down the details in my notebook and I've got Suzanne's card here and every uh, month I'm going to stick the yarn label in not because I need to remember it I just thought that would be a fun thing to do and I like sticking things in notebooks so that's the January one so you can see there it's called the secret treasure secret treasure box uh, blanket club and you get four 20 gram DK minis every month so i'll put the link to this underneath and i'm going to make the hexagons and i'm not going to do join as you go i'm going to make the hexagons throughout the year and at the end of the year i'm going to join them um using a uh, single crochet so that i get a raised join because i love that i love the look of a raised join that's my plan at the moment it may change over the course of the year so i've started with uh, one of the minis with my first hexagon just to get my uh, bearings with the pattern and to check my gauge. My gauge is way off. So I'm using a four millimeter hook. I'm usually quite a loose crocheter. And it said that with a four millimeter hook and DK yarn, this should be 11 centimeters across. I think mine's nine, but I figured it doesn't really matter. Just be a slightly smaller blanket. And these are the four minis. I've already balled them up. I only got them yesterday which is an absolutely cracking start, isn't it? Look how beautiful they are. So I can't wait to see how they all work up. And I'm quite excited about this, actually, because I very rarely work on projects which are 
lots and lots of motifs that I have to join together. I haven't done that in a long, long time. But I think because it, they're coming monthly, it's not going to feel like a huge chore to just crochet. I don't know how many I'm going to get out of each DK ball. My guess is I'm either going to get three or two and a half. So it might be that I get, if I get a three, that's great. If it looks more like two and a half, I might do some hexagons in multicolour. I might save it because some of the hexes will be halves at one end, um, in which case, and I've also got to fill in gaps as well. So that's what I might do with any leftover yarn. I'll just keep it and see how we go at the end. So it's going to be very much a work in progress, work in progress. <laughs> uh, and I'm using just an ordinary pony hook at the moment because I don't have a nice uh, like tulip hook or something a bit softer. So I'm going to order myself the tulip Etimo Gold, I think, which is my hook of choice at the moment. There's now a huge bit of plastic flying up the wall. Oh no, and off it goes. Oh, up the street. Um, yeah, so I'm going to order myself a nice hook to keep me going. And it's all living in my new bag, actually, which I shall show you now, even though we are not officially talking about incoming things, but I put this bag into use immediately. Now, I've got a feeling I will have to go to a bigger bag at some point towards the end of the year. Oh my goodness. So first of all, let's just talk about the outside. We've got the sturdy straps. One of the straps, where is it? It's got a D-ring. We've got a little D-ring with a little clip here, so you can have your, yeah, whatever you want, decorative key ring, stitch markers like I've got. And then you've got, uh, you've got a little spare stitch marker here but the best thing about this is the construction and the shape of it so this top bit is solid it's rigid and you undo the zip and it opens out fully like that look at that daisy so let's just appreciate the fabric the daisy lining and can we just say is that not the most epic chicken fabric of all time I love it. It reminds me of my Peggy Sue, even though I was saying when I first got this, I was talking about it on the vlog on my other channel, and I was saying you'd have to reverse the colours, Peggy's grey with white flecks, but it still really makes me think of Peggy Sue. It's just so cute. Um, oh, just amazing. I love this. I can just see everything all there. So this bag is by uh, This Lizzie Sews. Now she sells via Facebook and eBay, I believe. So I will put uh, her details underneath, but basically on Facebook, she is this Lizzie Sews, Instagram, she is this Lizzie Sews, and eBay, she is Liz this Lizzie Sews as well. Uh, and you can also email her at, guess is, this Lizzie Sews at gmail.com if you're interested. Uh, I love this. So she sent this to me as a total surprise, just saying I've, I've got a new, bag uh, shape that I'm trialling, would you like to have a, a go and let me know what you think? And yeah, so Lizzie, uh, this I think is brilliant. I absolutely love it and I'm hoping I can use it for the better part of this year for my little hexies. Really pleased with that. I'm gonna put it over on the sofa now because I'm gonna work on it later when I'm watching telly this evening. Or oh, no, I might go, might take it up to bed with my laptop and watch some YouTube and work on some hexes. Oh, that'll be, oh, that'll be lovely. Hot milk, chocolate biscuit with caramel. Oh, that's my evening planned. I feel like I've just, I don't know what I'm talking, I just feel like I'm wittering at this point. Uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about the blanket a lot. Oh yes, so, um, I want to talk about a sort of blanket project incoming. I mentioned how much, uh, so this is my second of the granny wrap um, triangles. It's called the granny wrap. So basically what happened was way, way back a few years ago, I was looking for a, a really easy, relaxed project that I could make over a few years and just add to it uh, in any order that I wanted for my minis from swaps and advents at Christmas. 
came across the uh, uh, granny wrap by Anna Boo's House, which is a wrap designed for uh, bulky weight yarn or you know a thick weight yarn, and it's designed to be a big chunky sort of wrap around your neck. But I loved the shape of it, so I thought, well, I'll do that, and I'll just use uh, a, a, I think a three point two five millimeter hook and my fingering weight yarn, and it worked brilliantly. My first one. I've showed so many times, so I won't show it again. So when it came to thinking of a project for my homespun house advent, I was a bit nervous about it because I knew it was going to be a fade. When I opened it, it was going to be a fade and it just I couldn't have worked more beautifully. I just did exactly the same thing. I added in each mini as I opened them and I worked until I ran out and then I held it double with the next one for just a couple of stitches and then just kept going and I could not be happier with the result. I love it. So this one is uh, 400, oh, sorry, hang on. So it's 24 times 20 grams. Is that 450 grams? Have I, written, have I written it down in my notebook? Probably not. I don't do maths on the podcast. No, I haven't written it down. I should do though, shouldn't I? So 24 times 10 would be 240. So 240 times two is 480. So yeah, 480 grams, this one. And my other one, which is much bigger, uh, was about 650 grams as well. And I wanna make one as a present. So at this point, I want to say, mother, I know you'll probably be watching. Can you please not watch this bit? So what you have to do is I'm going to put a chapter link underneath that's, that says uh, time mum needs to skip to. Okay, so you need to go underneath the video and it'll be right at the top and then where all the numbers are, you need to click on the number, which should look like a link, where it says mum skip to this bit or something along those lines. Okay, so you need to pause it right now and go and do that because I don't want you to see this, it's a surprise. Of course, you could watch it and ruin the surprise, but I'd rather you didn't. So there's a special link just for you, Mum, to go and jump to, please, because I want this to be a surprise. We'll just wait a minute because she'll be looking for the remote control and putting her glasses on. OK, I trust that she's done it now. Right, I have got five skeins of yarn, skeins of yarn in here that I have selected because I want to make a granny wrap triangle for my mum for her birthday. Now her birthday is the 7th of April and in between times I've got Dan's birthday, I've got several other auditions that I need to drive about for, I've got Lilia's 18th birthday including a party and we've got Easter. Whether or not I'm going to actually get this done remains to be seen. If I don't I will just um, bump it to a Christmas present. So I want to make one for my mum and I went through all my stash which was so fun because I very rarely at the moment get to pull my stash out and spend time with it because Dan works in the bedroom and my yarn is in boxes in the bedroom but there was a day when he wasn't there or it was a weekend and I wasn't required so I chose five skeins of yarn from my stash in colours that I know my mum likes but that will also look good in her living room and these are the ones I've chosen. And I chose them because they've got purple, which my mum loves, and also they've got slight um, neutral tones, like beigey tones, and some red as well. So the red and beigey tones and gold uh, feature in my mum's living room, but she also loves purple and stuff. So I'm hoping that these schemes will work really well together. So in no particular order, uh, I have got green lumpkin yarn. I have an impressive amount of green lumpkin yarn and I am not, I am not sorry about it. I'm very happy about it. So this is Twinkle Toes. Look at that little, oh, look at that stitch marker. Oh my goodness. Suzanne has the best stitch markers. Did I show you the stitch marker that was on my first little hexagon? Oh, we have to go and I have to show it to you. I have to get my bag. Oh, sorry for the tangent, but I, oh, I just love the little stitch marker. It's gold 
and it's a doubloon and a jewel, just like you would find in a secret treasure box. Oh, I love it. A doubloon. Oh, 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 oh it's just so pretty. Oh, I'm so excited about that project. Anyway, back to this project, which I'm also excited about. Uh, where were we? So this is Twinkle Toes by Green Lumpkin Yarn. And then I've got another Green Lumpkin Yarn. Oh, this has also got lovely stitch markers on it. This is Blackberries. Isn't that lovely? And look at the stitch markers again. Oh, it's gorgeous. I'm going to have the best decorated project when I'm making this. Then I've got Mrs. S Creations, The Tea Party. Oh my goodness, just look at that. And this has got another amazing piece of yarn jewellery on it. It's got a little teapot. This is giving me Alice in Wonderland vibes. Oh, love it. And then I've got oh, uh, Castle View Yarns, Best Day Ever, which is so beautiful. Lots of lovely purple for my mum there. And then I've got a really lovely, uh, sort of neutrally, very lightly speckled one. This was a gift from my friend Ali. Um, this was a single batch one. So it's a one off. Just like my mum. Oh my goodness. So that's going to be lovely. So how I'm going to put them together, I don't know yet. I don't know if I'm just going to... I'm going to, I'll cake them all up and then I need to make a decision about whether I'm just going to do one, you know, do them in sequence, one row of one, one row of the other, all through and then start again. Or if I want to sort of fade them into each other, sort of start with one and then do a few rows alternating until I go into the next and so on. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Should I sort of fade them into one another? Or should I go one after the other? Part of me sort of thinks going line by line might work because then I can use every last bit. If I have, to, if I fade them into each other, I'm going to have to spend some time calculating how to do that and still being able to use up all the yarn. But oh, I wonder if it needs more. Red. No, I like the colours. So that's going to be a 500 uh, gram blanket so it's going to be roughly the same size as this one so it's going to be perfect for her to have on the sofa to have around her shoulders of an evening when she's knitting or watching television and that's my plan for my next my next granny wrap blanket right my battery is going to go and my tummy's rumbling so i am going to go and change my battery and make a cup of tea and get a biscuit you won't notice and then when i come back in about a nanosecond i'm going to talk about some patterns on my radar and some incoming bits. Have a nice little chat and get inspired and yeah, be nice. So press pause if you like and go and get yourself a cup of tea as well and we'll meet back here in no time at all. Having a chocolate bourbon. So nice. Got my mug. It's a maritime family fibre mug with a lobster and yarn. Couldn't be more perfect for me. This was a gift from Susan. Thank you, Susan. I love this mug. Cheers, I'm drinking um, Yorkshire tea, toast and jam flavour. I don't really go in for flavoured teas, but I am partial to the toast and jam flavour. It is an acquired taste, uh, but I do. I, I I have that acquired taste. I have acquired the taste for it. It's in a lovely bright pink box in the supermarket. I've had comments saying how much you love it and I've also had comments heartily disagreeing as well. <laughs> so it's definitely one that uh, you have to, you either like it or you don't. It's a bit marmite I think. They also do a biscuit one which I don't like but a lot of people do. Anyway this isn't a podcast about tea. Do you think there are podcasts out there about just tea? I've never looked. Maybe there are. Maybe it's a whole different subsection of YouTube that I don't know about. Oh, that's lovely, but it is a bit hot. I've also, hopefully if you're thinking, wow, her nose doesn't look half as red as it was, 
uh, I've just put some of this on it. Um, when I was watching Vlogmas, uh, Laura Penrose's Vlogmas in January, I watch a lot of Vlogmases in January because I do Vlogmas on my other channel. So I don't really have time to watch many Vlogmas. And I save them and I binge watch them in January. And I think it's actually one of the best ways to watch them. I love it so much. So I've been watching Laura Penrose and she was getting like this beauty box. And one of the things she had in it was Dr. Jart Seeker Pear Tiger Grass Colour Correcting Treatment. I don't know why I'm going off on a makeup tangent. I don't even wear much makeup, but that's it. And it's green, basically. It's like, well, it's kind of like a sludgy, sludgy smoothie colour. And you put it, if you've got redness, and it kind of neutralises the redness, and you, you need like the tiniest amount. So I went and found, they do it in a much bigger tub, but I got the smallest one. It's, it's not cheap, but this is going to last forever. And uh, the girls use it as well. Uh, so I, yeah, I got some, and uh, I've just put I've, where I've had a really red nose from having a cold. I've been putting it around my nose, and I do. It, I'm really happy with it. It's uh, a really good thing. Nothing to do with knitting or crochet or yarn or anything like that, but just thought I'd mention it. I promised you some patterns on my radar, so this is where I talk about patterns. That, oh, DBT, DPD vans just drawn up outside. Is that for me, or is that for opposite? I'll keep posted. Yeah, so patterns on my radar is where I talk about uh, patterns that I've either been given or that I've spotted or that someone sent me a link to or something like that and they've just sort of popped on into my being. Oh, it's for next door. I haven't ordered anything and I'm not expecting anything, but there's still that frisson of excitement, isn't there, where you're like, oh, the DPT man's here. <laughs> it's not Mick. Normally it's DPT Mick, but it's someone else. The first one I have to share with you is undoubtedly one that has been shared with me the most times since uh, it came out. I'm assuming it's come out this year because I suddenly, I think so many people sent me the link to it, but then I was sent it as a gift on Ravelry. And in case you haven't guessed, it is the Emotional Support Chicken. <laughs> it's by Annette Corzino. It's a knitted pattern and it's $5.00. Uh, and it's made with worsted weight yarn, but I guess you could make it with whatever yarn that you've got and it would just change the size of your chicken. So that's about £4.15 if you're in the UK. And when I went to have a look at the pattern page, it says in the description, life is hard and we all need a chicken to make it better. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Sometimes I go down and just sit with my chickens just to watch them because they are so hilarious. Uh, and it also said that her, that the chicken that she's made, the designer, is called Lindsay Lohen. <laughs> and that was a lovely gift from Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. And in her signature, it said from Stephanie, and in brackets, it said, go ducks. So, go ducks. I don't know what that means. I don't even know what kind of sport that would be. But yay, ducks. Go ducks. Uh, and thank you, Stephanie. Go chickens. <laughs> and it made me think of one that I already have. I bought a pattern. Uh, towards the end of last year from Etsy and it's from Oak and Marlow on Etsy and it's called Mabel Chicken and I bought it because I think one of my viewers had emailed me a picture of one that they'd made and it was just so that's the next door's dog barking at the post lady what was I saying chickens yes so Ma Mabel Chicken is a it's available on Etsy uh, I'll put a link to it underneath the same of all of these patterns uh, it is uh, five pounds 39 and it's definitely one that I want to make. Can you imagine, like, with this kind of yarn all held together, all nice and bulky and soft? Oh, just gorgeous. So that's Mabel Chicken. And speaking of chickens, I had another gift uh, a little while ago uh, from M. Thank you, M. And it's the Christmas Chicken Beanie, which is a crochet colour work hat. Which would be, I'm not, I haven't done a lot of crochet colour work, so this would be a real challenge for me and something I would really really enjoy having a go at it's by jennifer borchert and it's made uh, it's designed for aran weight yarn it's four dollars which is about three pounds thirty and it's really sweet really really sweet uh, and it'd be perfect little little fun thing for to to either wear for christmas or give as near christmas and then the next pattern that has come on my radar is the gudrun stromper which is the gudrun socks 
by Christina Burke. She's a Danish designer uh, and she contacted me to give me some copies to give away uh, as prizes. So they're going to be prizes for one of my make-alongs later in the year. So make sure you stay tuned throughout the year to see when you can win a copy of those. And there are two versions of them. There's the DK version and the fingering weight version. And it's a new type of heel construction, which as far as I can tell, uses uh, ribbing. So you don't have a heel flap, you don't have a gusset, anything like that. It makes it, it keeps it super simple. And I'll put some pictures up so you can see how pretty it looks as well. And yeah, so there's two versions, uh, knitting, knitting, crochet, DK and fingering weight. Uh, it's 24 Danish krona, which is about £2.90. Each of each one of those patterns costs 24 Danish krona. Uh, yeah, so I, I've got some DK yarn that I really want to uh, use soon in a project. So I think that is what I'm going to use that yarn for, because I'm really intrigued by that heel construction. And then another one that I wanted to mention, we're going back to crochet now. I wanted to make this in the run up to Christmas, but I ran out of time. I do have a really awful printout here, but I'm not going to bother with that because it's just not very good. I'll put a picture up. It is the Positive Potato. There's another van pulled up outside. Honestly, the vans. So we've had the Post van, the DPD van, two builders van, they've gone and now we've got a Stone Life van. What kind of stone, what are we thinking? I'm thinking that might be kitchen surfaces. So I've gone into a complete dwarm now watching <laughs> watching people go into their house opposite. I'm so sorry. I don't feel like I'm in a very uh, focused state of mind today. Uh, yeah, so the positive potato. There are a few uh, patterns for positive potatoes on uh, Ravelry and, and beyond. Uh, but the one that I have chosen is a free pattern, it's crochet, and it's by Carrie Fiorello. And it's got a little, you can, it's got a little suggested thing that you can write and print out and it can hold it. And it's supposed to, you make it for someone and you give them a positive potato. And the little sign says, I may be a tiny potato, but I believe in you, go do your thing. I just... I love stuff like that. Lilia saw me looking at it this morning when I was doing my show notes in my book and she was like, is that a potato? And I was like, yes, it's a positive potato. And she kind of paused and I said, you want one, don't you? And she was like, I really, really do. <laughs> so I'm going to have to make some positive potatoes. And finally, my lovely friend Nancy over at Nips It Happy has got a new pattern out. And again, it's DK socks. I'm loving this because I, I've made a couple of pairs of DK socks now and I really like them and she's got a DK sock pattern out they're called Njord uh, they're really sort of squishy and textured and the yarn she's used for hers is gorgeous uh, they're five Canadian dollars which is about just over three pounds uh, and yeah I love those as well so I think there's going to be a few pairs of DK socks incoming and speaking of incoming, I didn't mean to do such a smooth segue, but I did. <laughs> incoming things. Um, I just literally grabbed things that I were in my eye line uh, that I thought would be fun to share. Uh, and I've made no notes about this, so I'm just going to have to to wing it. I've already shown you my bag that I got from Lizzie. Oh, it's just so nice, the toast and jam. Yummy. Okay, so I've got some lovely yarn to share with you. So first off, I had a lovely parcel from Liana, all the way in Canada. And she sent me some yarn that she said, I can do with what I want. I can uh, use it as uh, for myself, or I can use them as prizes. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I'll keep you posted though. I have a big box of things that's all prizes and yarn prizes and things that I gather. So sometimes yarn goes in there and sometimes they find their way into my stash. <laughs> so first off, I need to show you uh, the <laughs> Sir Cluckyton the third. Here is a picture of Sir Cluckyton. He is magnificent. He is absolutely fabulous. 
What a good looking rooster. What's the difference between a rooster and a cockerel? Are they the same thing? I, I, I've been saying rooster, but maybe he's a cockerel or maybe it doesn't make a difference. I can't believe as a chicken Oh no, I don't know that. Not that I have a rooster and or a cockerel. Anyway, the yarn is inspired by Sir Cluckyton III and it is by Arcane Fibre Works. There's their ticket. I don't believe this yarn is, um, I think the yarn is discontinued uh, as in this colourway. But there's the details anyway. You want to pause it and this is the yarn that's inspired by the picture. <laughs> it's just so good. How good is that? Oh, I love it. Oh, love it. And she also sent from Topsy Farms, which is on Amherst Island. It's a postcard. It's a lovely sheep. This, this is pure sheep wool and it is worsted weight it's called dialot h2 and on instagram they are topsy farms if you're interested it is so rustic so textured so lovely i just love this type of yarn and such a lovely pink color i've actually sniffed it oh it just smells it doesn't smell sheepy it just smells Homely. That's the best way I can describe it. Homely. So thank you, Liana. That's amazing. Gorgeous yarn. The next thing, the next skin of yarn has got a bit of a, a story behind it. So as I've said, I've been travelling around the country taking my eldest daughter for auditions at university. During that process, it happened that we were spending the night in the city of Preston in Lancashire. And Whilst Lilia was off doing her audition, I met up with a Strictly Sock Along prize winner. What happened was the Monday that we were due to, the two, about two days before we were due to go up, I read an email that had come in from Julie, who was one of the winners, uh, that uh, getting in touch to say, oh, you know, thanks very much, here's my address. And her address was really nearby. So I emailed her back and said, you won't believe this, but I'm coming up your way on Wednesday this week. How about I drop off the prize to you, unless that's too weird and a bit stalkery, in which case I'll post it. But she was like, yeah, definitely. We can meet up, we'll have a cup of tea. And that's exactly what we did. We met up at the hotel. She showed me around her hometown of Preston. She introduced me to parts of the city that I've never seen. I discovered that Preston is indeed a city uh, I didn't know that. It doesn't have a cathedral and normally to be a city you need to have a cathedral but Preston was given city status by the Queen um, some time ago. Um, I think for one of her jubilees she did it. So it's now a city and so I dropped off her, her prize to her but she ridiculously gave me a little prize, a little Preston prize as well. And it was just so unexpected. So she gave me some lovely little Preston things. I've got some nice little stitch markers here. And I've got the Preston Guild uh, fridge magnet, which um, is gonna go on the side of my microwave. I love that. And I'll explain why this is gonna have a place in my home in a minute. And she gave me a Preston bus station. This made me laugh so much. Notepad. This will definitely get used. I use notepads left, right and centre. Um, so Preston bus station, the hotel where Lily and I have now stayed twice and had such a lovely time together, is right next to Preston bus station. So I feel like <laughs> I, have, I have fond memories of Preston bus station, looking out of my hotel window at it and meeting Julie I have even fonder memories now as well. And she also gave me, look, oh, it's like my two worlds colliding, my walking life and my knitting life. It's a little hiking sheep with a little bobble hat. How gorgeous is that? So I haven't got a proper walking bag yet. I'm just using my old rucksack. But when I get my proper walking bag, 
this is going on it and I'm going to put on a really locky clip so I never lose it. So she gave me those, which is delightful enough, but she also gave me some yarn and it is gorgeous. It is the wool shed. <laughs> so I have a bit of a challenge for you with this as well when I've told you my story. Look at that. It is called Spirit. It is a uh, 75-25 superwash merino nylon. It is fingering weight. So I'll ask you first, what should I make with this? I want to make something that is either inspired by Preston itself or Lancashire or by a designer that is based in Preston or Lancashire. Because, uh, yeah, so this yarn has to be made into something like that, either by a designer, preferably by a designer actually from that area, Preston or Lancashire. I think it'd be like brilliant socks or hat or anything. But if you know of the perfect pattern that's inspired by that area of the world or the perfect pattern by a designer in that area of the world that would work well, please leave me a comment and let me know because that's what I want to turn this into. And the reason is, so she showed me all around Preston, she explained some of the traditions of Preston and some of the delicacies like parched peas <laughs> and uh, explained you know all the bits around the city and we had a lovely walk around and we had a cup of tea and it was it was so lovely I've said lovely too many times but it's the best word to describe our afternoon and I came home and I said to my mum oh we've had a wonderful time you know Lilia went for her audition she got an offer as well by the way she's had two offers now uh, and by the time this goes live we're hoping at least another two or three she's got some more auditions where was i yes yeah, so i came home and i said oh we've had a lovely afternoon in preston and my mum said oh that's lovely because you've got a family connection haven't you and i was like huh what do you mean i've been doing my family history recently <laughs> on ancestry and both on my mum and dad's side i've gone back to the 1700s and it's just been uh Scotland, 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 and also crofter, crofter, farmer, crofter, grave digger, crofter, farmer, farmer. <laughs> it's like there's not much to discover in my family history. So when she said you've got a family connection to Preston, I was like, what's she, what's she on about? Uh, in the Second World War, my granny, my mum's mum, was a spot welder whilst uh, so a lot of the women uh did the the jobs that needed doing whilst the men were away fighting and my granny was a spot welder and she lived and worked in preston during world war ii she moved down from the uh fife area of scotland uh <laughs> where my family have been for generations crofter grave digger farmer farmer <laughs> and she spent that time in preston uh, as a spot welder and went back after the war so I messaged Julie and said oh you won't believe this but I've got a family connection to Preston she said you are an honorary Prestonian so that's oh I just love it when something comes around like that all these coincidences it's just brilliant so that's my little story for my incoming bit so I think that's enough waffling for me this was supposed to be a really short podcast because I didn't have like a ton of stuff to talk about but I think I've managed to really pad it out with a load of waffle so uh and finally just the bits at the end all I wanted to say was thank you for the love on my vlog my making vlog but I've already said that um I just really really appreciate it I love that you love watching what I love to make video wise but also you know knitting and crochet wise as well um it's yeah it's wonderful I feel feel very very happy that you do uh and yeah, so up incoming for February, lots more driving, lots more auditions, lots more stuff going on. I will see you again in February when I do my little making vlog. I'm going to try and do that every month throughout the year. And I'll see you again for a proper podcast at the very beginning of March. And just thank you for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you've been working on as you've been watching in the comments. Let me know what you've been drinking. Have you been having a nice cup of tea or coffee? Maybe it's the evening. Maybe you're having something a bit stronger and more exciting than toast and jam tea. And yeah, 
and let me know if you've got any pattern suggestions for my Preston yarn or Preston gifted yarn I should say and I'll see you again next time thanks so much for watching until next time happy knitting happy crocheting bye <laughs>